Okay. I, I wasn't planning on doing this. Hmm? I turned off the monitor. Okay. It's my wife. I wasn't planning on doing this. But recently, because of somebody who I subscribe to and who subscribes to me, he had put up a video recently on why he thinks evolution is dumb. And he wants to support creationism. Now, honestly, I really don't care what people believe in. You can believe in whatever you want. But if the reason why you don't believe in something is because of ignorance of the very thing that you don't believe in, that's where I have a problem. So I'm going to start laying this down the line. And at the very end of the day, if you simply accept these as facts and then you just simply say, well, I don't believe in them anyway, then that's on you. But it's one thing to believe in something that can't be proven, but it's another thing to believe in, some, um, believe in something because you don't know what you're talking about. So. As you can see by the title up there, talking about evolution. Evolution is a hot topic specifically because Christians and their outdated beliefs just don't want to leave this alone. The problem is when you start talking about evolution, it becomes apparent that no one seems to know what the hell it is. And worse, when you start trying to define what um, evolution actually is, the real scientific term for it, then they start thinking that you're switching the definition on them or that it's changing on you. No, there's always been one straight up definition for evolution, one way of describing it. But because the common people always find ways of abusing language, and we can do this with so many different terms, um, like irony, for instance, is a term that's constantly abused and it's not being used in the way it's supposed to be used. Evolution is another one of these words. Many times when you see people arguing back and forth, it turns out that not only is the person arguing against evolution has no clue what evolution is, but even the person arguing for it has no clue what it is. Okay? Now you might be wondering who this dude is over here. That's my friend Adam. Hi. Um, you might have noticed me talk to him or referred to him before. I'm going to stop talking for a bit because he's the physics major. He's the one who's been studying the scientific method for quite some time. And even though I know a bit about this and I could argue this video myself, I would rather turn this over to someone who knows more about the field than I do. So, okay. if you want to take it, well, go ahead. The, well, the first thing that I've always heard people mention over and over and over again is it's only a theory. That's one of the most popular lines. And the thing is, in science, everything is a theory. A scientific theory is, okay, let me back up a little bit and try to go through the whole scientific method. Things start out with a postulate. That's one term for it, is a postulate. A postulate is a well-informed, educated guess is the best way. You look at the situation, the physical phenomenon or whatever, and you try to figure out the way that it works. What it is, how it works, how being the most important thing in science is how. What and how are the two questions that science tries to answer. Not why, but what and how. And you try to figure out the way it works. And you say, okay, I think it works like this, using this mechanism, blah, 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 blah. Then what you do is you design a series of tests to test this postulate. And to do that, you come up with a, with a, with a hypothesis. A, that is a, sp a specific question that you are looking to, to test. And you're looking to see if you get a, sp a specific re like re result from your test. Such a thing as saying, According to this postulate, we should get this answer if we do this. And so then you do this several times, and you see if you get what you expected to get. That's how you test things. And you do this several times, and you get people who aren't involved to do the same thing. If it can be replicated, your experiment and your test, and you, and you get the same results, the same questions, from the same tests with different people doing it, that's considered proof in the scientific terms. If you do this enough times and you prove this postulate enough, then it becomes a theory. And a theory in science is the best proven 
mechanism to explain something. You can say the theory of gravity is the best way that we have of, de of describing and explaining what happens when you drop a ball, or what happens when planets orbit one another, or things like that. And even that's changed during this, cent during this past century with general, with Einstein's general relativity, we know that gravity actually doesn't exist. What we consider gravity, classical gravity from Newton, doesn't actually exist. It does in the, the scale of our planet and the macroscopic scale somewhat, but it, it's more involved than, than that. And all that Newton really did was explain one small subset of the entire thing, and that what gravity really is, is warping the space-time by mass. And, and it leads to the somewhat popular joke amongst my fellow physicists that gravity doesn't exist, the Earth sucks. <laughs> which is an over simplification of things, but it's a fun way to do that. But, that, but that's just one, but that's one thing. Science is constantly refining their understanding of what's going on. Scientists set out to disprove things, to disprove these various postulates or even long-standing theories. New evidence comes up and they see if it fits the existing theory, and if it doesn't, they go back and revise the existing theory until they get one that works to fit everything. Sometimes they even toss out a theory if they find that it's completely disproven. Right, which they've done a couple times. Th th there was one theory at the beginning of uh, the 20th century, which was that light traveled through an ether, that they, since all waves have to travel through some sort of medium, and they didn't know how electromagnetism worked. They assumed that there was some mysterious medium called the ether. trans something ether. I forgot the name of it. Yeah, some, it, but it was just the, the just the ether that light had to actually travel through. It couldn't travel through the vacuum of space. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that they were wrong. They did tests and they found that they did tests and they found that there was no ether. That all the things that people described in the theory of the ether didn't work. That people were looking at, at if there's an ether, it, it operates like this. Well, people tested it with better and better mechanisms until they found out that there's no ether. And then Einstein and then Max and then James Clerk Maxwell came along and started to formulate the new theory of electromagnetism with electromagnetic waves. Back before then, actually, they thought that electricity and magnetism were two separate things, then, and, and then they found out that they're not, that they're one force. And we're still constant, and, and science is still constantly refining what they know. Most, in most cases, they don't have to throw out anything, and all of the old versions are just limited, ver like, are just limited things, like all the old classical physics for the motion of objects are still are still there. It's just they're just a small subset of the grand picture. But right. that's the way that science works. You try to disprove things, and if you can't disprove things, science doesn't actually a good scientist doesn't set out to prove anything. <laughs> because if you're trying to prove something, you're automatically biased towards that thing which is something to keep in mind in general. If you ever set out to prove something, something, you are biased towards that. That's something that su that psych people know about a whole lot. It's, it is experimenter bias. And they do things where they do you know, like double blind tests and things like that, where the testers don't know what they're handing out, <laughs> so that they can't bias so that they can't have their own bias go into the end result. And it looks like we're running out of time. Well, I'm going to just keep this going and then just okay. chop it up. So this will be a chop off point right here, and then we'll just go right into the evolutionary part.